Hi, my name is Professor Mack and welcome to my laboratory. Today we are learning about energy and work. In physics and engineering, we use knowledge of a quantity called energy to understand nature and to design efficient machines and improve chemical processes. There are many different forms of energy. Examples include the kinetic energy of a moving object, the chemical energy released when a fuel burns, and the thermal energy due to an object's temperature. Work is a process that takes place when energy is transferred. We see this when an object moves under the action of a force. The force does work as it moves the object. An amazing thing about energy is that it cannot be created or destroyed. It can be converted into different types of energy, but there will always be the same amount of energy before an event takes place and after the event takes place. It is a fact which is referred to as a conservation of energy. Just think about that for a moment. What this law tells us is that if we calculate the total energy before we do something, for example, drop an apple to the ground, and then calculate the total energy just before the apple hits the ground, then we will calculate the exact same amount of energy. When I drop the apple, it falls to the ground under the action of the gravity force. Now using our knowledge of work and energy, we can predict the velocity of the apple just before it hits the ground, and when we do this, it is going to reveal something quite extraordinary. As the apple falls, it has the force of gravity on it. The force of gravity acting on an object is its weight, which is calculated by multiplying the mass of the apple by the acceleration due to gravity, g. In the case of an average sized apple, its weight will be approximately one newton of force. Newton is the unit we use to measure the size of a force. The work done by the force is calculated as the force times the distance moved by the force. So in the case of the apple, that is its weight times the height dropped, and this may be expressed as mg times h. Assuming the apple is dropped from a height of 1 metre, the work done by the gravity force on the apple is 1 newton times 1 metre, and that gives us 1 joule of energy transferred to the apple. Joule is the unit we use to measure energy. Remember that energy cannot be created or destroyed, so the energy transferred from the gravity field has still to be there somewhere. Do you know where it has gone? Well, it has been transferred to the apple. You can see the apple has increased its speed, and this is because the kinetic energy of the apple has increased. The kinetic energy of an object is determined by its mass and its velocity, and is defined as a half times its mass times its velocity times its velocity. In other words, a half its mass times its velocity squared. So let's use the conservation of energy to calculate the velocity of the apple just before it hits the ground. The kinetic energy of the apple must be equal to the energy transferred to it by the work done by the gravity force. So that is, a half mv squared must equal one joule. And we calculated this was due to the weight of the apple, mg, times the height dropped, h. So we have half mv squared equals mgh. And rearranging this, we have the velocity of the apple is given by the square root of two times the gravitational acceleration times the height dropped. This is very interesting, as it shows the velocity of the object does not depend on the mass of the dropped object. It tells us 
that all objects would have the same velocity after dropping one metre. That is incredible. It tells us that if you dropped a tiny little apple, or a really large apple, they would both have the same velocity as they hit the ground. You can learn more about this in my video on gravity. So that is energy and work, and how to use the conservation of energy to predict the behaviour of objects around us. I hope you enjoyed learning about that. So from me, Professor Mack, until next time, all the best, bye.